Right then. How we're recording, are we all good and gravy? Right, the camera's gonna wobble a bit because it's fucking windy. My name's Matt, welcome back to the shop, and this is a bit of a shop chat. It's going to also... Nah, fuck it, it's going to be a shop chat. So, this is my, um, I say my, one of my um, crank balancing stands, and unfortunately, even this one isn't big enough. Um, there is quite a bit of stick out here, but uh, I need that to get it in and out and in and out and in and out. Um, but what the fuck is this? You might not have seen this or this kind of thing before. Um, in the past, I use I used to use my lathe a lot of the time because it's a bit easy. You put it between centres, you indicate it, and then you rock and roll. Um, but before I had that, I built this bloody monstrosity, um, and uh, it, it, for for little two stroke, you know, for little two fifties and stuff. And all the rest of it, and little two two hundred cc's and stuff. Um, it worked a treat, you know what I mean. Um, so if you've never seen this before, you'd be like, "What the fucking hell is this?" So basically, what this is is this is a crank stand. There's many ways you can do it. I like the center to center uh, way of doing it like this, where it's between centers, so the whole thing can rotate. Oh, bloody hell! So the whole thing can rotate like that. Uh, you can see that the rods are bound up because otherwise they end up just flapping everywhere and hitting everything unless you've got enough, enough clearance, uh, which this stand doesn't. And I always used to basically cable tie or wire up con rods so they don't start flapping around. Um, so basically these are just two um, centers for uh, milling machine tables when you use like when you do rotary indexing and stuff like that. And um, the way this works is, I don't know if you can see that it's stamped in there, it says, you can't see that, but I'll probably put some pictures up or something. This is the static side. Um, there are slots in this. You can't see them because these are sat on top of it. You, oh, no, you, I'll, again, I'll show you pictures, but there are slots in this. Um, this is about an inch thick piece of aluminium. I think this was 6061, I believe. Um, and it's got slots that basically just go up and down and then some extra holes that have been added over the years and these are keyed now i didn't i don't usually use these stands there's another set of stands that i have that go in here um that are taller but i couldn't find them when i went digging around in the lockup so what is this for what you do is especially with a, a, a crankshaft like these it's a shame that this isn't big enough to you know put the Ducati crank in or anything else like that um, but basically what you do is is that the, the, the tip of this uh, these two centers so these are pointy um, <laughs> these two tips touch I think that's a prison a prison euphemism um, <laughs> but basically these two tips are uh, and the tapers themselves on the end the um, uh, centre tapers are perpendicular, uh, not perpendicular, are uh, concentric and parallel to each other and to the base. Um, it takes a long time. I've been dicking around all day for about an hour trying to level this out and set it all up and dick around. But she's out. And all, she's now all locked up, snug. And what you do is is you put a crankshaft in. And this is the static side. There really is no difference apart from this one I raunched down to complete madness. And what happens is when you tighten this one down, that one then becomes your reference surface. And that is then referenced off this surface, not off this edge, but off this surface. And you use squares and stuff like that and then basically reference that one. Then what you do is you stick your crankshaft in and then you basically just butt this up. There's a bit of grease in there in the end here. You just butt these two up, not extremely tight, but so it takes the weight of it. Then what you do, you get your indicator out and you indicate a piece of the shaft. Now, sometimes this is quite difficult on this because there's fuck all shaft sticking out. But there's a bit of shaft sticking out there just before it goes into the bearing. This relief cut surface, you don't really want to use that. You want to use basically the bearing seating surface. You can see all the bearings spinning 
all spinning freely like that and you grab the shaft there and as I turn this and this is a knobbed indicator because this is um, my, a micron indicator so each graduation on there is a micron when we turn this and it settles what we get is we get about seven microns so that shaft is seven microns uh, out and to give you an idea what what's so uh, one micron uh, one fa if you live in america one thousandth of an inch is 24 25.4 because it's 25.4 millimeters to an inch uh 25.4 uh, microns so this is seven out so that's about two about two ten thousandths that's how much that is deviating so this circle and the thing is we might be measuring the concentricity of the shaft as in the um the roundness if you want to put it that way so when we spin this we're getting about seven microns which is fucking good enough for me <laughs> seven microns is is fine so now that we know that this is pretty much spot on what we're trying to do is this is all a unit construction so this section here so this shaft and this section here is one piece this centre section with the crank pin is one piece and this gear with the two shaft, two shaft, uh, shaft running basically through it's all one part is one piece this throw here with the crank pin is one piece and then this is one piece so we've got one two three four five we've got five separate pieces of steel that have all been pressed together to make this crankshaft and what we're doing then is we're then getting this end because we know that this center and this center are basically on the dog's nuts aligned with each other when we turn this we are getting this is a bit different so we're getting uh what's that 50 microns so we're getting 50 microns out so 50 microns over this distance so that's two thousandths basically two thousandths of an inch out at this end which to say that this thing is god knows how old and how many times this has been apart and together again we know that some of these con rods have been changed because they don't match up this con rod is different to this one um that is pretty much shit hot really i'd imagine you know we're talking um two thousandths out over this distance that's fine for for a part that is not um you know this is not one solid shaft if you get what i mean so that's absolutely you know that's fine really you could live with that i don't know the specs are. i need to look that up and i'll put them on the screen when i find it um of how much it can be out but 50 microns might seem like a lot but it's it's not it really isn't you know it's not a lot at all so um what you then do is you then take this out you flip this around put it back in the other way and then you're basically verifying your measurements by doing that so i'm going to do it with this it doesn't need to be done now i'm just using this as the demonstration i've been talking about doing this video for ages i finally went and got all the shit out of the lock up it took me fucking ages to find um like i said there are many other ways you can do this like i said between centers on a crank don't crack don't stick it in a chuck and then a tailstock it needs to be between centers um because when you you shouldn't be grabbing bearing surfaces anyway now you might see in the manuals and stuff a lot of things they show you um sticking these on the bearings the problem with doing that is that there is clearance in the bearings so if we look at this bearing for instance we can spin the bearing and we're pretty much getting off in which is pretty good there's quite a lot of side thrusting in these bearings though so i think these bearings have seen the best days but if we spin it on here uh, not hit the bloody fucking con rod let me just move that see what we're doing with these dial test indicators is we're not looking for absolute numbers we're looking for deviations so a sweep basically so we're seeing pretty much the same yeah we're seeing the same there same kind of sweep 
which is fine and that's actually stopped the bearing from moving which isn't exactly ideal um, but yeah you can see what I mean it this is you basically when we, we're going to split this apart real soon I've got the plates ready and um, we're going to stick it in the press and we're going to separate these crankshafts we're going to put new rods in new bearings and um, put it all back together and then what we're going to do is stick it back in here and see exactly how concentric this whole thing is because where these crank pins are so here these two discs so this one and this one these two throws can literally rotate around that and be horribly out and I'll show you how I um, when pressing together basically get it pretty much dead nuts for the first press I'm really not a fan of tapping um, crankshafts to align them I'm just not and I, someone sent me that video in Indonesia of some guy just beating on this thing <laughs> fuck me um, I'm not a fan of doing that the press fit and then you're done jobs are good and and I'll show you a quick and easy way in a sense of pressing these together now you know how many people are doing RG 500s not fucking many or RG 250s really not that many however the principles used in this and the disassembly of this crankshaft and the other one are pretty much the same things I use for nearly every single crankshaft, two-stroke crankshaft I've ever taken apart. So, hope that makes sense. I'm sure there's going to be loads and loads and loads and loads of questions. Um, there's some uh, old parallels that are bolted down to this. That's how I get the, the magnetic basis to stick to this. It's not actually to the aluminium, it's to the parallels. It's a nice flat surface that I usually lubricate when this goes in its box and goes into storage and all the rest of it. Um... And really, like I said, these are all locked down. These aren't the right clamps. I tried to look for the other ones. That's why she's half hanging off the edge. And that's the best hole I can line it within here. Um, but yeah, the, the best thing about these is stuff like this is, why is it on such a thick bit of aluminium? It's just basically rigidity and stiffness over this distance. Uh, yes, I'd love to use a massive piece of steel or something like that. The, 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 the dimensions we're talking about here aren't ridiculous. It is an inch thick. It's not really supporting that much weight, and that is another thing: is the weight concern. If I had a, an inch thick slab of steel, this thing would weigh fucking shitloads with all this other shit on top of it. <laughs> you know, and this doesn't rust. All I have to do is protect the parallels, and that one's got a bit of marring on it. But shit happens. Hope that makes sense, and I'll see you in a bit.